Matthew Brennan. Hey, Paul. How are you going? It has been quite the journey, my man. Totally. Apparently, it's and, been the hero's uh, journey. It's been the hero's journey, and we're we're only uh, part way there. But uh, wow, what a transformation! And uh, inside and out. And I, I just wanted to really have a chat with you for for everybody else, just to get, um, I, I guess, a bird's eye view of how this program has served you on a personal level and also how it's kind of yep. lifted your household up as well. Oh, I'd love to share it. So it's been, it's been quite a journey for the last, what, four months, is it? I maybe four months, yeah. I think. Yeah, yep, yep. Five and months, maybe, I'm not sure. Anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been the better part of uh, half a year, I would say. And uh, um, I just, the, the first thing I want to mention is, is from my perspective as your coach, it seems like the transformation that you have taken inside from a, from an emotional standpoint, as well as yes. uh, <clears throat> other aspects has been just as powerful, if not more powerful than um, the external transformation. And even speaking about them independently seems wrong because they are one in the same. That's definitely been my experience. Yeah. Which I'd love to go into. Yeah. Well, let's start there, shall we? Um, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Um, <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. What, what was life like for you transitioning from not, not being a father then to being a father? Oh, that's a good one. Um, so I remember the day that Max was born, I'm going to try not to get uh, emotional here, right? As you know, it gets quite, gets quite deep. Um, I remember, you know, the moment I held my son in my arms in the hospital and I just remember there was this moment where I knew that in a lot of ways, my life was never going to be the same ever again. And a lot of ways I felt like I had arrived into uh, a natural next phase of who I, who I was anyway, which was, you know, the role of a father. So my wife would say that being a dad helped me get my stuff together. Am I allowed to swear on this call? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, to get, to get my shit together. Um, so I kind of, uh, like most men probably did a lot of uh, growing up and gained a lot of confidence in my role as a dad. Right. And since then my son's now six and I just, it's literally like, you know, the thing, the thing that, that matters the most right now in my life is to be an excellent father, a teacher, a role model, um, um, and to play my part in, um, in creating his future, you know, mm. and doing the best I can to develop him. So, so, so when, when I became a dad, um, it was scary. Um, it was enlightening. It was, it was uh, emotional and, and this, I couldn't even describe the love I have that I felt. Um, it changed my life. And, so. and we, don't get a ma we don't get a manual when, uh, you know, we first <laughs> you know for, no all way, the, day, day. for all the fatherhood books that you can read, uh, they, yeah. they, they become uh, irrelevant and fade into obscurity when the hands-on experience of being able to navigate day to day with your, with your That's partner, right. with your, your family life really just becomes um, an intuitive uh, process, you know? Well, it becomes, and the way I say that is it becomes the reason for being, right? It becomes like you, mm. and I, when, when mates of mine become parents now, uh, I'll say to them, I'm not going to be that, that next person that gives you all the parenting advice right now because it's going to be useless anyway. <laughs> Whatever I say is not going to apply to what your experience is, right? All I can tell you is that I'm here for you if you ever just want to pick up the phone and you just need to talk to me about anything after you become a dad, right? So, because uh, you can't. Everyone has a new, what I call, contextual shift. Yeah. Um, so you go from being single to being father and life will never look the same. <laughs> and yeah. you can't describe that experience. Yeah. And, and you're spot on. And I think it's up to you whether it's uh, a constructive experience or a destructive yeah. experience. 
and I'd love to like so. just go, I'd, I'd love to go through what those uh, steps were when you did first become a father. Were there any um, moments where you felt like you were a little bit in over your head? Were, were there moments totally. where you were a little bit vulnerable? Totally. Um, uh, you know, the truth is uh, the first year for us was quite stressful. Um, and as, as I think it is for most people, I don't think everybody feels that, but it definitely was for us. Um, and not in the parenting role as such, just in how life changed and how to navigate that, right? So we're talking six years ago now. I remember my first year in the job I held then, my job at the time became really stressful. Um, you know, there was a lot of demands placed upon me at the time. And, and um, before becoming a dad, you could kind of, you sort of felt like, well, if you wanted to leave that job and go to another job, it wasn't a big deal. It's like just a change. Whereas now it was like, shit, I need the money. Like I, I need to, I'm like a provider now. So I can't risk this thing. Um, so, so, so work became a bit stressful because of, you know, I suppose what it meant for me. Um, another thing I found that was challenging was um, in the relationship, um, you got to work out, the role suddenly you go from boyfriend girlfriend then to husband wife and then you go to then you transition to mum and dad <laughs> <laughs> and it's like all right so um who does what when and having to work out what's fair and what's agreed and um who gets up who has to do dinner who who does the dishes um all that stuff right um <clears throat> so that's part of it too um and obviously, is this kind of this, this kind of answering the question? It really does, and uh, okay. it, it, right, it, it, it's wonderful. And like you know, it just I just would love to kind of um, use that as an opportunity. You know, you, you said you transition into being father and mother, and I think a lot of people really find it ch it challenging being able to yeah. then identify their roles as boyfriend and girlfriend. Correct. husband and wife again or even Correct. their role within themselves as an individual and being able to honor right. each role because we all consist of um different roles that are made up in our That's lives right. and being able to honor each one individually correct and that's that was exactly how i saw it so uh because even though you're mum and dad you're still husband and wife and you know in effect boyfriend and girlfriend you still see each other that way right and mm -hmm. Um, it has, um, and that was part of the stress, is it changed the dynamics of the relationship probably forever, right? Because it suddenly, um, you know, this is going to be posted to the men's group, isn't it, Paul? Is this going to go to our group? Yeah. So, so um, you know, so it changes everything about how much time you can spend with each other. You know, in some ways it changes your romance side of your life, the sex life. It changes um, how much time you get to hang out with each, with each other. Mm -hmm. And suddenly... Um, prioritizing um, stuff that you used to connect with became sometimes impossible and other times, um, you know, way more important than ever. Um, so it's just been a navigating um, that transition, you know, and it, it gets easier as, it gets, as time goes on, I think. Yeah, well, I suppose it becomes more familiar, but I'd love to kind of explore um, the, the aspect of your relationship with yourself when you when you stepped into that fatherhood role and that yes uh, yeah. that uh, I suppose hat that you were wearing being able to honor that time for yourself and and, and this kind of leads into um, the health yeah. side of things you know I'd love to see um, how you navigated that. Um. So the health side of things, or how do I navigate uh, my role? How, so my role is you, yeah, sorry, how, how you navigated in the past and when you first, like, w when you first realised that, that it was, um, I suppose, a tactical um, approach. Yes. So, to, yeah, so to, to answer your first question, how did I navigate the relationship to myself? Well, uh, that was, it, became, it, it it definitely changes things. So you, you know, like um, what you, what you identify as things that you found important before suddenly 
were, were different. Um, your social life changes. You don't get to hang out with your mates as much. Um, um, you know, work drinks becomes a scheduled event versus something you just turn up to and go home whenever you want, right? Um, so a lot of those things that I identified with, you know, as a person uh, definitely changed. But then um, as far as the health side of things go, um, it was quite different for me. So um, the context shift into becoming a dad really highlighted the importance of my survival. Me it's like a survival mechanism kicks in, right? And suddenly you realise that you've got to be the healthiest you possibly can be because you're responsible for this kid's life and you've got to provide for your family and you've got to be the warrior. You know, you've got to, you've got to be strong enough and fit enough to get out there and, you know, bring the meat home. Um, and so when my, what my wife said to me was true. I really did get my shit together and I really started to explore things like, you know, um, you know, my career changed. Um, my outlook on finances changed. Um, and you know, the truth be told, it's taken me nearly six years to, and, and the hero program to really get my health in order because I just found that whilst, um, fitness in the past was really important for me. Uh, it was a lot easier when I just was in a share house and I was single. You just go for a run because you just won't feel like going for a run. Um, yeah. you, you, you go to the chicken shop and have salad because you could just, it doesn't matter if you spend 15 bucks on dinner every night, it's just your money. Right. Um, <laughs> and then when you, become, when you get, when you, be, when, you know, in, in fatherhood, you get busier and you, you feel like there's more demands on you and, and it becomes stressful. So, so I fell back for a while into uh, very old patterns of thinking, such as comfort eating and skipping workouts and not working out at all for a long time. Um, whilst, whilst knowing, you know, deep inside that, that I wasn't honoring myself and I wasn't being the best dad that I possibly could be, but then, but then at the same time, not really having the structures or the support or the, the way forward to get out of the routine that I was stuck in. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think, like I said, it's been six months with Hero and, you know, I've hired personal trainers before and they've all been great in their own way. There's nothing, nothing wrong with trainers. And I've read all the books uh, about nutrition and diet and movement and strength and all sorts of stuff. And I've, but the thing is that it wasn't the information that I needed in this case. And suddenly I realized that, you know, in this, in this time of my life, I just really needed, it wasn't even accountability I needed. It was really more support. I just really needed someone to sort of go, you know, sort of like how you start your calls, like, how are you feeling today? <laughs> uh, what's been happening in the last week? Um, what's gotten in the way of that workout, um, how you're eating and just, and just engaging me in a supportive mechanism versus what worked for me before becoming a dad was that sort of performance sort of uh, context where it was like CrossFit or, you know, weight training where it was like, all right, how much are you lifting today and how hard can you push today? And, you know, let's work out six days a week. And it no, that domain no longer worked for me. So, yeah. Um, so I really struggled for a long time to pull it all together, you know, since becoming a dad and, um, and that started to affect my relationship with myself, of course. Mm. You know, and, um, and the way I looked and, um, the way I felt about myself and, um, you know, more importantly, um, you know, it starts to make you question, um, whether you'd ever get it together you know because it, it, it just becomes this it became this frustrating cycle of overeating or and, and going back on diets and starting training and getting busy and stopping training and and then couldn't quite get it together so uh, that's why in a lot of ways i was looking out for something like your program which was you know in has has been quite instrumental in me making a really great start towards my goals I'm not sure whether that answers answer the question. Uh, it did and, and more. Uh, it touched on so many different aspects of, um, in my mind and through my experience of being able to make shifts with my behaviour, 
um, it, it really touches on a lot of things. And for me, what you described there in your own past is really understanding that behavioral change doesn't come uh, from doing things. It comes from emotions and it comes from being able to create positive emotional change with yourself. And yes. if you don't achieve that, then you're at risk of creating a, a negative emotional um, uh, relationship with yourself. And as you, as you just um, described, that can feed on itself and it that does. can continue to feed on itself and it creates an identity of, um, that, 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 can't, that can be pretty destructive at times. And, right. and slowly and gently over time, what we're both together being able to do is to create a, a much more gentle um, awareness of where you're at, you're at and where you could become. Yeah. And, and if you notice yeah. right now, where you're at now, right now is a place that is, uh, you know, like w would have been just unheard of at the beginning of our journey. Totally. And that's actually true. So um, I was reflecting on some conversations we had recently and, um, you know, you mentioned at the start of the call that, you know, there are results more than just what's on the outside, but also what's on the inside. Right. And um, the, this, this may or may not make sense, but I, but I came from a background where, you know, my family, it's pretty normal to be big, you know. Most people are big in my family, um, and um, you know, there's carbs everywhere. You know, there's bread, you know, puddings, cakes. Yeah, that's kind of the way my dad grew up um, in the Australian um, in Bendigo, and then the way I got brought up. You know, Christmas and Easter and birthday parties and all that stuff it involved a lot of food and a lot of big serves and. Um, you know, so that there was never a sense when I when I became an adult, I definitely worked on diets and nutrition. But what was really missing was that that inner barometer of what feels right, when is enough enough, and what foods give me the most vitality versus just satisfy or fill me up. <clears throat> um, and I think if you were to describe where I'm at today internally with, with my relationship to food, it's definitely in a place where I've never been before. It's definitely a, a much healthier reflection. So um, I gave for example, we just, just had Easter Sunday recently and I shared with you, I had a couple of hot crust buns and a bit of chocolate. And I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't want to photograph these things, but you know, Paul, Paul's going to, you know, think I'm off, off, off diet there. But I thought, no, no, what he would say would be just enjoy it, but limit it. I'm like, cool, I'll do that. And I remember Sunday night feeling sluggish and feeling like I could have had the whole damn packet of hot crust buns. It was like this, like, the, like I'm never satisfied with, with carbs and chocolate and ice cream and things like that. It's almost becomes insatiable, right? Whereas the next day when I jumped on Monday, when I jumped back on, to you know the design of how i've been eating um suddenly i have one meal and it satiates me it's like you know a protein and veg and you know a bit of healthy healthy carb suddenly i'm like oh the body's happy again and i feel regulated i feel i feel present i'm not emotionally going like this and i know when's enough is enough um mm. and that's I'm by no means out of that prison. I'll call it a, you know, I'll call it a prison because obviously it's been, you know, it's kind of been the thing that I feel I've been trapped by for a while. Um, and I think a lot of dads are too. A lot of people who struggle with their weight as I have, I think that's the underlying issue is it's not the knowledge and how to work out and what good for you. It's, it's that awareness to know when enough is enough and what types of foods satiate you. Um, and I've been experimenting mm. with, um, you know, those I've been sharing with you, I don't mind sharing to the group, um, kind of experimenting with like high carb and high protein and fats. And I've been, and I've, I've arrived at a, at a point where 
I've realized that high protein and a very moderate amount of carbohydrate tends to make me feel the best, perform the best and feel the best. And it's mm. not hard work. I know, I, know, I know roughly what to eat now. Um, and I think that's the thing I'm trying to get to is I have, I have a sense of control now that's effortless. And that's that I've never had that. Mm. I've never, ever had that. Um, um, and that's, um, and whilst my external fitness journey is by far from finished, that's one part of my inner journey that's definitely, um, progressed and it's, it'll, it'll keep going, I hope. So that's, mate, that's, that's absolutely beautiful. And, uh, the reality, the reality is, is your fitness journey is never going to finish, uh, you know, no one's fitness journey finishes, uh, you know. What do you mean? I, I thought I, what, isn't there an end to these, to these horrible workouts, Paul? There's no finish you line. There's, there's no finish uh, line. It's about, it's about stepping into the person that enjoys just uh, your new identity. And it seems like you are so, um, you, you've taken your new identity with both hands in such a way that you are now intuitively going far and beyond what has been administered to you um, yeah. in, in whatever health protocol I've, I might bring up, you know, yeah. uh, for the weekly, uh, for the weeks ahead. And you'll take that and you'll be like, okay, that's great. And, and I love that as a base, but now what if I could incorporate uh, some, uh, some gratitude journaling? What if I could incorporate yes. um, uh, some mindfulness? What if I can create, my my own morning routine that serves me and my future identity that which is actually me now you know and, yes. and that's exactly what you've done you've created uh you've taken exactly. you've become someone who intuitively goes over and beyond what is required of them because you know it serves you and I'm happy to talk about that too this that's the one of the other internal aspects which I've shifted and um, and the key word there that you've used is identity. And that's, so there's my relationship. So if I, if I had a whiteboard here, I'd draw it up. I'd draw a diagram, you know. So, um, so in, in one box, I would draw the relationship with food. And in the other box, I would say relationship to self or identity, right? So if we talk about over here, so I'm in teacher mode now, so excuse me. Um, um, that's been the thing I've realized that um, is the other uh, stumbling block mm. was basically, <clears throat> um, basically there is still some parts of me in here that's still the fat kid at school, mm. <laughs> you know? Uh, and whilst that's now long gone and it's definitely not who I am today, um, you know, there's still there's, what I had to get responsible for was that, you know, the, the, in order for me to, to progress from, say, whatever I weighed to whatever I weigh now and then beyond and then to change my shape, first starts with the picture in here. Mm. And you know, it's funny because I, I teach this stuff and I, I'm a coach by trade as well and um, I know about belief and, the, and how powerful belief and having you know, visualizing what's next is, but I, sometimes you don't always see it for yourself. And it's, and what I started to see through uh, just through the constant feedback in our pro program here is that the prescription of exercise and what to eat is one thing, but the change needs to start with how I first see myself inside my head. So I created for myself um, a process where I, um, create some silence in the morning. So I use a guided meditation. Um, and I've started introducing um, a, uh, a visualization or a manifestation document that I, that I now look at after I meditate. Because the idea there is that, um, is that in order for me to, to rewire the deep subconscious mind back here, which is really what I'm trying to do, which I, sorry, I'll take out the word trying, which is what I am doing. Um, language is important too. Um, I first need to tell my subconscious mind what the what the picture is. 
And so I visualize, uh, I found photos of certain physiques that I like. Uh, I swear if someone walked in my room and they didn't know me, look, me looking at hot guys, so they'd think, <laughs> it might look a bit odd. <laughs> but uh, basically, um, I found pictures of physiques, which I, which I thought were a good target for me. Uh, that, that reminded me of my goal. And I, and I, I visualize, I, I, I see myself in that picture and I'm working on creating a belief system which matches the, the picture that I'm seeing. I, I'm doing that every morning or most mornings now. Um, and the aim there is that eventually the subconscious mind will start to see that as, as, as already true and already my reality now. And, and then the results should follow. Um, yeah. And, so it's all and, and, part, part of, sorry, go. No, you go ahead, please finish. Oh, it's just all part of re reforming my identity to myself, my relationship to myself, because um, there's been a whole lifetime of struggling with my weight and a, and a family background of being, everybody's, everybody's big. So my reality is that. And I realize I have to start to work on just changing my reality. So that's the work we're doing. And, 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 you know, you got really good at uh, ingraining uh, an identity uh, over, you know, 40 years of existence. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, took, that, got, that took a lot of practice. And, and, and now what you're doing is, is you're doing the hard work to be able to override that mechanism in the system, so to speak. You know, that's right. and, and, and you're, doing, you're doing it all internally. It's a fantastic job and you're starting to see uh, the rewards of this, this new identity that you're stepping into. But, um, you know, you're also uh, being able to step into a new physique and new athletic physique and uh, being able to put on some lean muscle as well where you, you know, the, initially the first, uh, the, the, the first um, objective really was just to, to drop those kilograms. Now you're starting to, to create lean muscle around the shoulders and, um, your, your energy levels are starting to increase and your ability to be able to share this program uh, with your, your son as well is just so oh, heartwarming. It's like, it's like such a, an incredibly moving, whenever you sh send me a photo or a video of you training with your son, it just get, gets me every single time. <laughs> oh, it gets me too. I'm starting to get emotional now thinking about it. And um can I, that's, if I draw a third box up here, that would be another one, right? It's the third area, which is um, I, I want to be the dad that, and there's nothing against my dad, by the way, he did the best he could, but I, for me, the kind of dad that I wanted to be was one that set um, a, a very healthy foundation for my son to step into. So I want, and, when I, I should stop saying I want because it's already happening. So um, um, I wanted Max to see his dad doing burpees and measuring his food and, and uh, going out for runs and uh, doing t TRX movements and kettlebells. And, and I do it out, you know, even before uh, the coronavirus, while well, I was training at home. Um, and so um, as an, uh, Last week, um, I fitted in my workout at about 7 p.m. and I had to go outside just to the backyard here. And I hooked up the TRX um, around the tree and I had my mat on the ground. And one of the prescriptions you had was like um, uh, uh, split squats with a jump in between, which absolutely kills me, by the way, man. Um, and, um, and then and then burpees and then with, you know, with, um, with a, with a plank and all sorts of stuff. But then it was the first time he'd ever seen me do a burpee. And, and now what he does when he pretends to exercise like me, he actually does a burpee. Right. And then he'll do it. He'll do a plank as well and hold it. Um, he'll also jump on my back now when I'm doing a plank and he'll stand up on my back. So he's about 20, 22, 23 kilos now. So that actually adds extra resistance for my abs to work against. And so we basically work out every, almost every day together now. Um, he, even, he even the other day uh, was pretending to be my coach. So he didn't want to work out. He just basically had my phone, 
had the app going and he loves to count down. He loves it, you know, when it goes 10, 9, 8, seven. so he calls it out, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and then he'll, he'll have the, he's in all my headphones and he'll say, burpees, dad, burpees, and, uh, um, uh, you know, star, star planks, come on, dad, five seconds to go, and he'll do that, right? <laughs> um, and what's really magical that's about just, that like, is... That's, that's just magical. What's, what's even more magical about that is that one of the pictures I have on my manifestation or, you know, visualization document was a dad and a son working out together. And I didn't even, didn't even twig with me uh, before that, that that was something that was already in progress. Um, and it only, it only, I only realized after that moment and doing it the next morning that I realized that that was already a reality that had, I had fulfilled on that wasn't a reality five months ago. That's, and that's, that's what, that's been one of my favorite results as well. Mate, it's, uh, it's just a, a dream to hear that it really is because you know, the reason myself and Daniel started Hero for me was, for, for, for me, it, like it was potently clear that it was a multi-generational uh, inspiration. I yeah. need uh, to, imp- for us, we needed to be able to empower fathers to become the best versions of themselves so they yes. could inspire their offspring, so they could inspire yes. future generations to be able to continue because things like, uh, you know, childhood diabetes and um, childhood obesity is, uh, these are, these are epidemics that, that, that are completely avoidable. And to totally. be able, and it starts with us. It starts with us as, as yeah. the father. Not to put too much pressure on us, but really it's just about whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, you are an example to your child and they see right. what you do. And as, as opposed to asking them to go down the streets and get you a packet of cigarettes, I don't even know if you can do that anymore, but it seems like something you could say. Um, you know, you can, you could engage in some healthy, um, uh, training with them or, uh, you know, like cook something healthy with them, do some juicing, you know, um, I've got this great juicing video that, um, I'll, I'll send through to you. Uh, I, I might even sure. post it because it's a, it's a great little, uh, juicing video that me well, and I just wanted to add, I wanted to add something to that too. So what you're just saying is uh, another little quick story was, I remember I was sitting on the couch a few weeks ago and, uh, Max brought me an apple. He goes, here you go, daddy. You like apples? Here's an apple for you. Just like a random six-year-old thing to do. And I thought, that's another thing that I thought, because, you know, what I would have brought to my dad was six slices of bread with honey and a, yeah. and a bottle of Coke and a bottle of Coke, right? <laughs> yeah. Or gone, gone to the fish and chip shop um, and got him some minimum <laughs> chips or something. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> And so, yeah, anyway, it's uh, it's a very different generation now. It's a different generation and he may not have known better. And the the, the point I feel that has transitioned from, let's say, your relation, your father, between your father and you is, A, you have the knowledge and the information. But you know what? Yes. We're, We're living in a Google age where everybody has the knowledge and the information. What is so impressive on your behalf? behalf is you've taken action with that knowledge and that information and your child has been able max has been able to witness it subconsciously digest it and take it on as part of his identity now and that is an admirable admirable trait for yourself yes yeah it's been good so matt you you, you, look look it it just continues to go from strength to strength and i just want to Thank you for coming on and, and just having a it's chat right. about what your experience has been like, because I think it's going to be a really valuable thing for um, all the guys in the group to be able to understand exactly um, what goes into and the, insight, the excitement of stepping into this yeah. new identity of somebody who takes action with their health and can inspire everyone around them, especially in times like today where you're in such close contact and proximity with your family and there's no, there's no avoiding it. You know, we're all, we're all pretty much housebound now. And to be able to have that 
contact with our kids. I, you know, it's always, I think I'm just a, uh, I'm a, you know, kind of an internal optimist, but to be able to look at um, a, a situation like we have today and be able to have the opportunity to spend so much quality time with our kids. Um, we're never going to have that again, most likely. It's true. It's true. Take this time and to be able to engage with them and inspire them and have that positive influence on them because, and it's not even probably, it's not even a thought process for you anymore. You know, like you're just living your life. You're living who you have become Correct. and Correct. your child gets to reap all of those rewards. That's right. And that's, um, it's the best thing that I can do for him. Yeah, it's true. Thanks, Paul. So I, I congratulate you for it, Matt. And uh, once again, thank, thank you, you for, for coming on the show. And uh, no um, and the last thing I'd just love to ask you is, is there anything that you would say to the guys uh, in this group, one thing that you could perhaps uh, ask them or inspire them to, to do, uh, you know, today? Good question. I want to think about this for a second because um, I don't want to sound cliched by saying, if you're on the fence, just jump in or that kind of stuff. Everyone would say that. Um, well, what, I, what I've really gotten for myself out of the last five months is not just a health and fitness um, results. It's actually, it's been a, a, a personal a personal growth as well. And I've, and I've been in the growth and transformation space for a long time. So I've done a lot of different programs and a lot of different coaching things. And, and, and I found that what you and Dan are offering is quite special, uh, like genuinely actually unique. Um, and I'm not saying that lightly. So um, if, if you're at a, if so to the guys in the group, if you are at a point where you're frustrated and you're lacking some confidence and you know, you're feeling like that nothing's worked before and you just know that, um, you know, there's a bit of support you need. And there's nothing wrong with getting that support. I would, I would reach out to the guys and actually have a chat. Um, and yeah, sure. You know, there's, you know, there might be an investment involved and it's actually, to be honest, it's not a lot. Um, um, but it's been worth far more than, than what I've paid so far in other results that I've gotten beyond my fitness. So I can almost, you can almost call it the beyond fitness program. Um, it's been a real personal development journey and, um, I've been able to, do, um, grow myself personally. If you want to grow yourself personally as well and get fit and be a great role model, then think of this as like an amazing coaching program to be the best dad you can possibly be. And who knows, you might get abs as well. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, and that's what I would you. say. Thank you so much for that, mate. That's a, a beautiful thing to say. And, uh, you know, you know, you know, I appreciate you and, uh, love the yeah. the effort that you're putting into yourself and i think you're you're a, you're an example to 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 everyone that of what they could become so congratulations thanks paul thanks for the chat i've enjoyed it thanks mate